Hi! So, today I'll be showing you the dev tool. The dev tool is basically the most important tool in all of Resonite. And you can find it easily in your inventory, under Resonite Essentials, Tools, and then the very first tool in there. Now then you simply just grab it and click Equip. Now, the tool allows you to create new objects, such as an empty object, a box, or even just simple things like text with an outline. Now, when you make a new object, some objects will have special editors. Like, for example, this text here, I can click on to edit it. However, the moment you select it by pressing secondary, it'll actually disappear. Same for this box here, where if I move it around currently, if I select it, that editor is gone. Now we can get those types of editors back by simply selecting the object again, opening our context menu, pressing onto gizmo options, and then for the box, for example, selecting box mesh, which will really enable the editor for it. Now the way that you interact with these editors and any gizmo is just by pointing at it with your laser and then holding down primary. Now, as you might notice right now, sometimes it'll look a bit odd. Now, the reason why when you're interacting with these gizmos is because you're using projection mode. This is trying to use the laser, basically, to interact with these points. So instead of actually using where your, the tip of your tool is, it's trying to project where the laser would be. You can change this behavior in the context menu down here where it says projection by changing it to tip. And now if you move it again, it's going to move a lot more nicely. This allows for a lot more precision than projection since you're fully in control over any movement of the object simply by moving the tip itself. Now, selections come in two different types multi-selection and single selection. By default, it's set to single, but if we click here, it's now set to multi. However, multi has some limitations. For example, if I go over here and we duplicate this little box here a few times, and let's say, for example, we wanted to get rid of all of them. If I do a multi-selection and then go to destroy selected and then really destroy selected, you'll see only one of them gets destroyed because only the last one actually is selected for destruction. The same thing, if we quickly go to deselect all, the same thing happens if I select multiple things and then go to gizmo options and try to change to a rotational gizmo, only one of them, which is the last selected, will actually change. There's currently no way to mass perform those operations other than manually going through, selecting it, destroy selected, selecting it, destroy selected. Now, this brings us to gizmos. Gizmos are great, and you've actually just seen a few of them. But the most basic ones that pretty much every object has are translation, which allows us to have a free form move it around by selecting the transparent box in the center, move it locked to one axis by using the arrows, or locked to two axes by using the quad here. Now the quad is obviously these two colors here mixed, which is why it's moving on both of these axes. So the green and red arrow make a yellow quad, the blue and green arrow make a cyan quad, and the blue and red arrow make a pink or purple quad. Now, as you can see, I can move it sideways like this, but I can't move it up or down. Now, one thing to remember here is that currently we're moving this based on the object. So if I rotate this like this, and I move it around this plane, you'll see that it's actually moving sideways. We can change this, however, by changing in gizmo options to global space. So now if I rotate this like this, it they will not care if I move it on these axes here. It will move it based on the global space. 
So forwards is this direction, right is this direction, left is here, and up is up there. Now let's undo this. There we go. Another thing, if we're in multi-selection that we can do that's pretty cool, is we can select multiple objects, then click this little sphere here, and then if we move this close enough to one of these spheres, they'll simply snap, and now selection is once more combined. Now this works similarly with the rotation, so if I select these and then go into gizmo options and then go to rotation, there is ways that we can do this with rotation, as you can see, it'll just snap at the point that it gets to the same rotational point. Now I don't really suggest it for a lighting rotation since it's a bit finicky, but you can do it. Now. For rotation, it's pretty simple. You, you have these rotational points here, and if you rotate them, the object rotates. If you lock it again to global space, the object rotates, but the gizmo stays static, so you can manipulate the object around global space. Now, the last gizmo type here, scale, can either scale based on uniform scaling, which means all of the sides scale the exact same way at the same time, or non-uniformly, which is where you scale just one axis. Now, this scaling also does not care about space, so even if we're in local space, it will scale the exact same, and if we're in global space and have this sideways like this, it would still scale based on the local space, uh, local space rather than the global space. All right. So with selections covered, we now get to inspectors. Inspectors are pretty much the lifeblood of working with objects in here. If we go over here, we already have an inspector open that says inspectors. If we now create new 3D model box and we select it and open inspector, we'll have an inspector opened on this box. Now here we can do the first thing with inspectors, which is grab an object from here and drag it onto a different slot, which will reparent it. Now, after reparenting it, it'll still be globally in the same position, which you can see here as an offset from its parent. So this would be as 2.2 units on the x-axis, negative 0.3 on the y, and 0.13 on the z-axis. That is how far this box here is away from this point right here, which I can highlight. Oh, this point right here, which I can highlight by simply dragging from here and opening up a new inspector by pressing primary, which is how you can add, like, open up additional inspectors on slots without having to move inside of that hierarchy. Just grab the slot and press primary. Now, the next thing you can do with the inspector is you can reset the position. So if we reset position for this box here, it's now going to be over there, reset rotation, and it's going to go to 0, 0, 0. And then we can reset the scale, and it's going to go to 1, 1, 1. So now it's going to be at the exact center of this other slot here, and it's going to be at the exact scale of this slot. So if we were to, for example, scale the slot that it's parented to, it would adjust the size of the box, despite the box still being at 0, 0, 0. 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 1. Now, if we made the box bigger, obviously, in here to, like, double size, it would now be twice as big as it would be normally. If we then deparent this, for example, to the world root, we'll see the actual values here of 0.75, which is twice the size of 0.37. Now we'll actually undo this, and we can also parent it to the local user space, which in this case is the same, but what the local user space is, 
is the space that I am parented to. So if I was parented, for example, to a user manager or something like that, if I click local user space instead of world root, it would... <coughs> sorry. It would perfectly parent it to the exact same slot that I am parented to. Now, next, we can bring the object to us as such, or we can jump to it as such. We can create a pivot at the center. Now, this is actually very nice because if we go up here and press this button here, we can make a parent for this object. Then we can use this button here and make a duplicate of the box. And it's also good to keep in mind that you have two types of selections here. You have the focus and the selection. So over here, we still have the box selected, but we're focused on the parent. The way that we change the selection is with this button here. Uh, the way that we change selection is by double tapping onto one of these slots with primary. The way that we change focus is with this button here. So if I double tap onto the box and I click focus, it'll focus onto the box. If I press this button here, it'll focus one upwards to the parent. And if I press here, it'll focus all the way up to the next root slot, which in this case would just be root. For example, if I was to select myself and I go one up, it goes from leg to hips. But if I go all the way to the root, it goes to my avatar root instead. Now, if you accidentally went up in the focus, and you want to go back to the object that you had selected, as long as you don't select another object, you can simply focus back to that object and then go one up and we're back at our box parent. Now, if you want to make a child instead of a parent, we can use this button here, which will simply make a little child here. And you may have noticed the moment that we did this, this little orb here actually turned into an arrow. And if you simply press primary on this arrow, it'll show you what children are within that slot. Now, next, there is two types of deletions. There's the recycle button here, and then there's the trash can. Personally, I suggest to always use the recycle button unless you absolutely are sure that you want to use the trash can. This is because if we have an asset, on the slot here, for example, we go to Assets, Procedural Textures, and we'll make a solid color texture and then bake it. We now have a 4x4 black quad. If we now then use the red trash can, we'll first make a duplicate of it so that we don't forever lose it and have to redo it. If you use the red trash can, you'll see this is white now because the texture for it is actually Delete it. It's completely gone. And anything that used it now is no longer using it. Versus when we use the button here, it actually moves this asset over onto the assets folder on root. So it was to actually open the slot here on it, which is through a mod that I'm able to do this which is called show source location, which I didn't do a video on, you'll actually see here box child assets is the parent. So if I go one up here, we are here in the box child assets, which is parented to the assets folder and the assets folder is actually on root. Now this here will eventually be gone too if I get rid of this here and this here because if you go to sessions, every, by default, five minutes, the assets folder is checked and any assets that are no longer referenced in the world are completely gotten rid of. So the main difference between these two is whether or not you delegate the permanent deletion of assets out to the engine or manually decides you don't need anything parented under there anymore. This is why I suggest to use the recycle button Ideally, unless you're absolutely sure you want to use the red trash can. Now, the last thing to know about the inspector that is important button-wise is attach component. This allows you to simply open up the component attacher, 
You can put, for example, common UI button interactions and put a button toggle onto here, or we go to a different slot and we put a button toggle onto there. And now we have a component on here. Now, the thing to keep in mind there is that, as you just saw, if you navigate the inspector, it will put it wherever you currently select it, not where you originally opened the inspector. Well, the attach like the component attacher. Now another thing with components is that if I grab this grabbable here and then select the box parent, I can drop it onto here and click move component, which will actually move the component from this box here, the grabbable component, onto the parent. And then another one, there's another grabbable here. I can either click the trash can here or also move this one. However, I already have a grabbable, so we'll just click the trash can, which will just get rid of the component entirely, just as if we were to press the red trash can here for the entire slot. So if you had an asset on here and you press the red trash can, it would also be completely gone. Now what you can also do is you can duplicate components by simply pressing the red uh, the green icon here, which is the same as the one to duplicate entire slots. Now, one final thing that you can do here is with these buttons here, you can either, if we set this position to one here, we can either grab here and get all of these values. And if I move over here and then drop it onto position, it would copy over the position. Or if I click, there is reset to default, set all to an average, set all to X, set all to Y, or set all to Z. So for example, X is one currently, it would set all to X, all of them will be at one now. Now this is super useful when you simply want to grab and move these values over, which you have to make sure that when you grab here, you do drop onto the text here, not onto here. Because that button here, if you drop onto it, nothing is going to happen. But it's super useful when you want to mass apply values, for example, let's say, for example, 90 degrees. And for whatever reason you want to reset that quickly, you just click that and reset it. Or, for example, you set this to like 0.25 and you want to apply the scale to every one of them, you just set all to X and now it's smaller. Or, for example, you want all of them to be bigger, so let's set it to free. And then you set scale and then you set all to average. So now it's going to average out those threes and the 0.25 and the 0.25 to 1.16667. And this time, really, finally, finally, one last thing I just remembered is that if you have values, for example, if we make a value field here of type float, and let's make a duplicate of it, and then grab this value here and drag it onto this other value, it'll allow us to create either a drive or a drive with write back. And the difference here is if we make a drive, then this field here controls the bottom field. So if I put one, two, three, four, five, this field here is also one, two, three, four, five. And if I try to edit this field, nothing happens. If we enable write back, if I change the field that is driven, it'll actually edit the other field. So you could either edit this one or this one. If we disable right back again, you can no longer edit the bottom field. It'll just stay statically at the value that's being copied over. But yeah, this covers everything about the development tip. It, it covers create new, we covered inspectors, we covered all of the gizmo options, except for one. Select parent. So as a final thing, if you have something like over here where you have an object that you can select, but then there's also a parent to it and you want to actually select the parent, you simply open the context menu, go to gizmo options and click select parent, which will then select the box parent and now we can move these things together. But yeah, other than that, we have covered everything. Well, if you have any suggestions for future videos, please leave them below. Sorry if my voice isn't sounding great, I'm still a bit sick, but I still hope you enjoyed this quite longer video, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye!